Welcome to Fishing and Nature, and I am Reese, and today we're going to be talking about ice fishing gear. Here we have one style, which is a wooden tip-up, where you would open this up, drop your line down through the hole. This would sit into the hole like that, and you'd bring your flag down. Flag gets Put in between there, put the metal inside there. When the fish goes and pulls the line, the metal piece hits the flag, and the flag flies up. That's one style. These are older. Then we have the rattle style. where you could clip this onto a bucket, you could clip this onto your ice shanty, you can clip this onto an ice peg, and it has a rattle inside. So when you have it like so, and it starts to take the line, it's got Velcro on the side of it, so it's a little difficult to carry. Is up. I don't know if you see that really quick. Put that again. Like it's set up on the side like so. And once the fish starts taking the line, goes one rotation and then it has a little arm that it's hard with the belt there. Right? Well you saw it the first time really quick popped up. Then oops, we've got the Orbis bag. Then we have the newer style of plastics or the measuring tape style right here. And you drop that down and you have a heavy set and you have a light set, which are two different grooves. And you would bring this piece down here, if we were going for pike, you'd set that in the heavy set, and you make that sure it's straight, and then your line would go in through this hole right there, and drop out, and then when this comes around, boop, flag opens up. If you do it for trout setting, it's even lighter. Light one is for trout, or for panfish, small calicos. Um, you can see a twist. So is it twist? Black pops. That's another one. This one's called a polar tip up. It's by the company Polar Tip Up. And then we have one here. Covers, whoop, it covers the ice hole completely so your hole doesn't freeze up as fast. I have this set up here so the string hook that goes down to here like so. Let's hang it up. So the string goes through, and then we set the flag, and then once a fish comes by, we just pop, and there's your flag. I normally put bells on the ends of these, so you hear little jingle bells, and the bell would start going off. And then we just reel it back up. Celsius, zero Celsius. A little information there. 
And then, my ultimate favorite. You have a jaw jacket. You bring your legs out like so. And you drop these pins so it digs into the ice. And then you set your fishing pole right here. And then your string goes down over here and it locks in place. It's almost like a giant mouse trap. And then once the fish comes down and pulls the string, this piece here which rests just like that. Boom. And once that happens, there's a trigger on the bottom here. It releases and the fishing pole snaps up, which sets the lift. We make these in automated also. And then you can change the length back and forth on how far you want this away from the hole. And also uh, the length of the fishing pole. You have pins, you can remove the pins so you could fold. So you'd have it go that high, go second or third. Go that high. I like it on the second setting, which gives it just enough of a by Jawjack. www.jawjackerfishing.com That's why I got that one. I also have another one of these. I probably have close to uh, 15 to 20 of these. Always good backups. A couple of those. Celsius ones. So yeah, that's about it for tip up. Another good thing to have, especially if you have an ice shanty, um, I don't have that in this video. Um, I can post some pictures. I do have a new ice shanty that's coming. I got rid of my large shanty. I just have my smaller two-man shanty. But it's always good to have a Mr. Buddy heater. Uh, takes the little propane tanks right there. Um, I have this one and I have another one by Mr. Buddy Heater that's smaller uh, and you could actually turn it on its side and cook on it. This one you cannot turn on its side and cook on it, but they do, do sell attachments that clip into the bottom here. Uh, and there's a food burner and there's another one for coffee and another one that's a grill. Um, but this one's really good. Portable Buddy, Mr. Buddy Heater. This one I believe goes up to about eight or nine thousand BTUs, and my other heater goes up to fifteen thousand BTUs. So there is a large difference. Uh, but Home Depot and Pinky Tackle Shop in the winter time will have it. The Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, sometimes Auto Parts, AutoZone, Variety's. Uh, they might have um, Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is a big, big one I go to. They have a lot of the stuff that a lot of ice fishermen need. So there's the ice heat. Uh, winter heaters is a must uh, if you have an ice shanty and want to stay nice and warm. To go with the heaters, always have a carbon monoxide detector with you. Uh, and if you're camping on the ice, um, always have it when you're laying on the cot, have it somewhere around your head and high up there. When you're laying down, always give it a test.
back in. Now we know it works. Now we know it's going to be good for us for ice fishing this season. A few other tools that you'll need, especially if you're pike fishing or walleye fishing, because they do have teeth. You're going to need some grippers. Uh, this one, you don't need to be all fancy and get something like this. Um, but I use these for big game fishing for saltwater and then for muskie and walleye. Um, but these are by Cuda. Tsunami brand uh, Cuda, and it's they're, they're just a monster. They, they have a beautiful light aluminum rotating 360. But what's really nice is it has the rubber handles, and it's also a scale. So depending on the type of fish. Pretty big, pretty nice. It goes all the way up to, I forgot what it is, like 40 something pounds, 50 something pounds, I could go all the way up to with this. Uh, and then, four, four sizers, these are by break. I don't know, I've had these for years. I've probably had these for over, 15, 20 years. Uh, and I just have them attached to each other. Just so I know where they are. And then when I get to my fishing spot, you know, I take them off and put them in different spots. Or sometimes I, I clip them to the bucket. Um, that's why I have this little, little clip right here. I got a line here. I just clip it off and I can use both. It's got a little stretchy so nothing's in my way. I drop this down, use this. I drop that down, use that. And it's completely out of my way. So yeah, that's another little tool. Okay, now we're going to talk about some safety. For one, you're going to need cleats that go on the bottom of your boots. So we're going to go into the box. A couple different styles of cleats. You have studded cleats. That's a studded cleat. You get these at Joblot, Walmart, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, um, all the Bass Pros, Cabela's, you're gonna be paying more there. Um, you get them at uh, Tractor Supply. And these are my favorite, these are spikes. Those you get for about five bucks. These you're looking at between $25 and $30, but the last, um, I've had these for three winters and the backs just started to pop and I fixed them with some zip ties. I mean, that's the easiest fix. You just zip tie around the metal piece to the other rubber and boom, off you go. Uh, this one has seen better days. It's a little bent right there. You have to tap that out with a hammer, get that one flat again. Those spikes are all right. Yeah, that top one, top toe, always get bunched up a little bit because the snow builds up. Snow and ice build up a lot faster on these than the other ones, but these, you climb the side of a mountain with these. Love these. These are by Eagle Claw. That's who makes these. Forgot who makes the other one. Um, but uh, that's one safety unit. Another safety is by uh, a lot of different companies make these. Uh, Fraybill makes these. I have two pairs of these. Uh, so you wear them around your neck and when you walk down the ice. Um, if you happen to fall into a hole or you fall through the ice, you grab these real quick and you jam them into the ice. Once you jam them into the ice, these will slide back. And once it slides back, a giant spike comes flying out. So once you push this into the ice, you want to be a 
too hard, but it's your hand. It pushes the plastic back and the spike releases. And that's what helps you stay on top of the ice and get your body out by smashing into the ice. And the picks get in, you crawl yourself out. So that's one safety way. Another one is a spud bar. Uh, a spud bar weighs around 8 to 10 pounds and it can go between 4 and 6 feet long. Uh, some guys use raw uh, steel bar, um, rebar, excuse me, but um, I bought a spud bar from Cabela's. It has a chisel end, uh, which is similar to this. It has a chisel end just like that, but a lot bigger. And it has teeth. This right here has a chisel on it. This is a scooper for your, your holes. And what you want to do is once you're walking out and you're spudding every single time, um, trying to check to make sure the ice is good and it's not cracking underneath you, you want to drill your holes while walking out. And once you do that, you're going to want to measure the, measure the ice. And this goes from 1 to 16 inches. So you drop this down and one is up here, 16 is up here, and you just see how far the ice is, and that's the best way to measure. To drill through the ice, couple different ways to drill holes. Some guys will sight hole, uh, which means they'll just take a chainsaw or an axe and put a big hole in the water, which I personally don't like doing. It's just a very large hole. Other fishermen or other inexperienced fishermen that want to go ice fishing may not see this hole, or when it's late at night or early in the morning, they might stumble into it and fall in. So you have two different, three different style augers actually. You have a hand style, which is just like this. You have your blades on the bottom, and you have your handle, and you just turn it like so, and it goes into the ice and it makes your hole. This is an eight inch ice auger. Uh, I do have another one that I have gas powered, which is also an eight inch. Um, so this is my spare head that I could switch off from handheld to a gas. Uh, they also make propane uh, and they also make electric so there's a few different styles you can get out and try um, i've tried the electric ones i do really like them but i do travel up to maine a lot and last time i was up there my electric died out on me every single time i was out there um, i just don't want to say the company or anything or whatnot but if you know your companies it was a green one and it just did not work out for me. So I got rid of it and I just went straight to gas power. It's just a lot easier. Yes, I know it's a lot heavier and I gotta mix fuel and gas, but I can cut through three, four feet of ice up in Maine. Like it's no problem. Here in Connecticut, I can get away with using a hand one some seasons. Uh, other times I bring out the gas one and it's just a lot quicker to punch through the, through the ice and get into your holes does wake up everyone on the ice, but hey, you yeah, know, that's ice fishing, right? Um, so that's another way. Uh, another way is to just use your ice bar and to just chisel out people's holes that have fished before. If you're just starting out and you don't have an ice auger and you want to get out there, bring a small axe with you, find holes that people have put in before and chisel away at those holes and try to get in there. Gloves always have tons of waterproof style gloves. Those are always the best uh, when trying to pull ice chunks out of the, your ice holes. Extra tip up line. Um, you know, you have your stakes for your, your ice shanty for your tent. Always bring giant pair of pliers wrench style because you never know what you got to tighten down paracord. I have paracord all the time, always bright colors. Neon pink or chartreuse, 
Uh, chartreuse. Always have, always have bright colors. Uh, I do have a blue, and that is also a very, very bright, vibrant blue. You never know what you gotta tie down, and with the bright colors, it just helps in the, in the daytime, walking around with all the snow. Sometimes you get whited out with your eyes, and everything's kind of blends, so with the, the color strings, you're able to see, you know, what's there, uh, what's being tied down to what, and where. Uh, also, lights. Lights are a really, really good safety feature. Um, these are from the dollar store. They don't run a, a, any replaceable batteries. Um, as far as I know, yeah, they don't open or anything like that. I've had this for, I don't know, probably like three or four seasons now. And I had two or three of these. I think they're still in there. I'm gonna have to get more. But what's nice is they come with this little clip and they spin around. And I clip them onto my ice shanty up on top that clip them up there and then I have spotlights and it's it's kind of nice it gives me some light when it's you know three four o'clock in the morning and you're trying to set up inside the ice shanty for the day uh, or if you're getting out there in the evening um, just before the sun goes down and you're just about to be set up and you need to have a little bit more light yeah these I also have the they look like light bulbs you get at Walmart and run like on AA and AAA batteries and you can hang those, and those turn on, those work great also. Um, and then when it comes to the lights also, this is really cool, this is for your hole. So you drill your hole and then you put this outside of the hole and you turn it on, here's one, make sure it shines two lights. Two gives four lights a little wider and three all the lights shine and you put this around the hole you have one light shining over the hole and these are going down into the ice and it's illuminating your hole which is pretty cool it's pretty nice this is made by clam that's run off of batteries or you can also uh, plug it in with a that is a DC battery port or something. No, it's one of those big wall ones. If you're not come with it, I don't think it's just easier to change out the batteries. This is really cool. I've had this for eight or nine seasons so far. Yeah, and uh, we'll get back to you with some more lights. Right now with the lights. This light right here is a whole bunch of LEDs. There's about a 10,000 LEDs, I think, on this one. Gr uh, glows green, so you drop this down. And actually, this video right there on YouTube shows that I'm fish, ice fishing in Connecticut, and I have this light drop down and illuminated bunch of the ice underneath me probably a good 20 30 foot spread all the way around all depending on how deep you have it in the water uh, this will attract all the little small plankton and krill all the little bugs will start flocking to this light which then will bring the smaller bait fish which then attracts the larger fish and so on so you end up getting a feeding frenzy uh, this also works um, saltwater fishing for squid Freshwater fishing in the summertime, throw it off the boat, throw it off the dock. Very good to have uh, ice fishing at just those wonders. Another thing when it comes to lights, this little doodad, this is awesome right here. This is called a glow ring. This is by Vlexar. Uh, so you can, uh, if you have a, a Vlexar, um, it can actually hook up directly to your Vlexar fish finder by this plug right here if you don't or you don't want to hook it up to your fish finder uh, like I do not have mine hooked up to my fish finder I have a different fish finder to begin with so I have these prongs they're alligator clips and they just clip right onto my 12 volt battery I run three to four 12 volt um, lithium-ion batteries 
uh, and I'm going to show you that in a second. I don't have all of them with me. I just have two in this box as of right now, just for an example. But with this Lexar glow ring, uh, it attaches to the side of my box that I built. You flip on this little light and it glows purple. When it glows purple, you can take your glow-in-the-dark fishing lures and uh, what you do is you slowly drop it down through the center. Uh, we'll just use this as an example. Let's grab it. This lure right here. So if this was a glow-in-the-dark lure, you take this and slowly drop it down through the center. Just like that, about that speed. And come to the bottom and then slowly bring it back up. Do that two or three times, or you can just hold it and sit there, give it a couple spins. And so if you if you have a, a, a spoon that flops around, make sure you get all the angles and then pull it back up and it'll start to glow. Drop it down the hole and off you go. That is the uh, the glow ring by Lexar. So now showing you my box that I was just talking about. This, I'm running the Garmin Striker uh, 4. I love it, here's your traditional. Uh, this is not the setup I normally have. I have it uh, zip tied down inside here so it can't move around. Just bear with me, but there's your traditional. Uh, and then you can go back. Water spot. And then you have your fish finder flasher for ice fishing I do have my ice fishing transducer on there which is why this is working you can see it start to freak out because it's inside the box right now so what I did was I took a container from Walmart it's a heart toolbox container and that's from the top right here and the other top so right here I have filled with, with stuff uh, just elastic bands and zip ties and extra um, light for the head, head headlamp. But so this is how I have it set up there. So when I'm walking, this is tilted inside. It's on my sled. That's inside like that. Now I get to my spot, I pop that up, flip that up, and there she is. Everything stays nice inside. I open that up. I have a compartment tray that I, I do put lures and stuff that I want to switch out and that I'm using. Everything goes up in there. Sometimes I have mealworms or different types of bait. You see how dirty it is all up in there. Uh, I cut the, the bottom of that out so it's a compartment usually like that. And I cut it out so the, train, so the screen can fit right through. And then if we put that down, normally it's zip tied right there. Here's my batteries, and there's one, two, three, four batteries that sit in there. And those batteries, one will run the tramp, uh, one will run the fish finder, another one will run this light, and the Vexstar glow ring. Uh, and then I do have a cigarette plug and two US. The uh, ports to charge your phone. So I do have this USB, two USBs, and a cigarette plug here. Uh, it's, you know, it's a regular phone charger with big plugs there. And that's also set up with alligator clips, which I was showing you in the box. I have hooked up with those batteries, uh, so I'm able to charge my phone while I'm out there. And um, if I have to charge anything else, I'm able to. This way has a it's kind of tender right here. There we go. It's got a handle up on top. Scale. You set it. Uh, and then what's cool about this one is there is a measuring tape built into the bottom of it. Measuring tape, I think, looks like 40 inches. So that's still a big fish. So there's always that. Two of these, these are really good. Um, 
I use these for my clients. They pretty much, you know, it's like watching a little video game. You just prop this up, drop it down, you can watch your jig literally move around and watch the fish come into the screen and uh, eat the lures. These are colored screens. Um, they are probably a four or five inch monitor um, made by um, Mercury. Um, you do have to charge these. Uh, it uses a micro USB to charge. Um, they do not uh, record, even though there's always been like this little tiny thing up here. I've never been able to figure out what it does. Um, I have two of these. Yeah, there's another one on this side, so I know it doesn't do anything. Um, maybe it pops the screen off or something if you have to work on it. I don't know. But I have two of these. I love it. And then um, the one that I use for myself. a monitor right here this does take um, micro SD cards save you can record play zoom in zoom out there's all different features it does take this giant giant battery pack right here you have to charge up uh, I have a couple lures that are still in here I got Joe's fly and, and I like to have a weight on camera so it, it stays in one area if there is water movement or current and fishing or a dam or something, it's not going to go anywhere. Lots and lots of, of cordage, of wire. Um, and then I also, I don't know if there's any juice on this. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, and then what I have with this that goes with this is the AccuView. 3D camera set up to wire the wire to that little bottom piece here and then you have a remote that inside the shanty you can push it and it's left and right you hear that it spins around it gives you 360 degrees uh, without going out there and having to mess around with it you can stay nice and warm in your shanty move the camera around AccuView is a very good company for underwater cameras. Um, I love the box. Hard case box. This thing's gone everywhere with me. Lots of mean trips. New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut. That's gone salt water. It's been fresh water, ice fishing, open water. Alright. Next big talk is what type of fish do you hold? I always like to have a nice hard case for your poles, nothing gets broken. Alright. So you have quick decision. You just want to get into it, just want to try it out. Don't want to drop a lot of money. Go to Walmart. Get yourself a kid fishing pole. Just like drop, drop shot. Put a decent one, not like the Barbie one or Spider-Man one. Uh, this one's called a pitch stick. It's made by Shakespeare. This one will run you probably around 1995 or so, right around there. Um, what we have here, pull that out. So we have the tip bobber so instead of so when a fish is biting down look at the orange dot and that's what's see the green part's not dipping down the little orange part beep 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 or fish pink that's going to set the hook on that thing Bang. So that's your Shakespeare, regular push button, uh, push and pull, larger sporting section, little kids pull. Nothing wrong with that, trying out high school. 
This one is actually a 30 inch, and it's a medium action. Then, again, not an ice fishing pole, but just another uh, quick pole that you can use for ice fishing. Uh, also made by Shakespeare. This one was really cool. I saw this when I was at the Big E a couple years ago, and I had to pick one up. Uh, what do they call this one? They call this one a... Uh, Can't even read it, so it's scratched off on that side. Shakespeare Tangle Free Rod. Shakespeare. Pursue Rods, I think it says. I'm not quite sure it's all rubbed off, but it extends. push button knees cast really far that's why I got it I got it for the car a little summer thing on uh, the side of the road but I carry my regular fishing pole but I thought it was cool this one though will, will cost you about 25 bucks give or take this is at Walmart I don't know where any old sells them but I know Walmart has them it's the only place I know that that has them is Walmart uh, I looked at Cabela's and Basco and they didn't have them but uh, Walmart had them I've had this for a couple years now. Uh, this one is a uh, light action. It's got a nice little, it says light action, but it, this is really like a medium. Um, but it's nice, nice, nice little rod. Um, I left the string that's on here, a six pound test on here. Inside here, that was, I forgot what they had. There was like some other stuff that was in here. Oh yeah. Extra pins. They give you extra pins in here. Honestly, I have no idea what the pins are for. Because I've never had to never break anything off of this. So I don't know what the pins are actually for. Um, I thought maybe it was just a weight, a counter weight, and I was like, why not? Never really looked into it. If anyone knows why there's those uh, little things in there, just leave it in the comments. Those little pins. Leave it in the comments, let me know. I'm going to try to YouTube it myself, try to figure it out. Is that rod right there. And then um, you kind of start going up from there. Um, for example, I like to mess around. This is not a practical reel, uh, especially for ice fishing, but I like to have a little fun sometimes by myself. So I'm running a Just a Cabela's Bass Pro style rod. It doesn't really say. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, it's a medium. Medium. I should have known this anyway. Uh, I mean, this is my pike rod and walleye rod. And, like I know that, but I'm just trying to tell you guys exactly what it is. Um, but it is a medium. This rod alone will, will be about $49.99 at Bass Pro. It's got a really nice bend to it, nice spine to it. But the reason why I said it's not really a practical setup, um, I like to have uh, an old school fly reel that's on here, uh, which means there's no, no drag setup. It's literally, you put your minnow on here with a little split shot, and I'm using a little tiny hook. And I have mono set up to braid. And like I said, it's just free flowing. Like it just, you see it, it just drops down. So there's no 
clicking and stopping. So when the fish starts pulling on it, it will just start free, free spooling. And that's what I like about it because now there's no drag to lock up. It's just you and the fish fighting back. tightening the drag. If that fish wants to run, that fish is running. You gotta, gotta handle that fish. And that's what's fun about this setup. I do change it out once in a while and I do put on a regular spin wheel on here. But that's one of my favorites for walleye and pike when I'm not using a spin wheel. Or drop. One of my favorites for trout and panfish. It's got a nice little wiggle to it. I have a little 500 series. Um, system Shimano. Uh, Sienna. Sienna. I've had this one for many, many seasons. I got some electrical tape holding that reel on there, but electrical tape feels nice in the hand, um, stays nice and tight on there. You don't have to worry about realigning those bands or zip ties or anything like that. So we use electrical tape. Now, with this setup, you can see, you can see how crazy that is. I use on the jaw jacker, which you saw previously. Set that up, this goes right in there like so. Oop. And then you open up the arms. And then we're gonna let some drag out. Whoops. Now, to set it, we got this little orange piece on here. Bring that down. And flip that little piece up that I was talking about before. Just like that little trigger guard. Now that's gonna go down. See so now that's inside there. And then we're gonna flip that up. That line. Top of there, like a mouse trap. See it? Now, without me getting hooked, what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is, the fish will come by and pull down on the bait. Boom! See that? That snap. I'm holding the tension down because there's a hook on the end of this, but if there it fly straight up like that. So it's like this, and this one, boom. And that's how you catch the fish. And you walk over there, and you pull this out, and then you start reeling the fish up. That's a jaw jacket. They're a lot of fun. You put the bell. jumping around on your hook. And you run out there, and you slide, and you grab it out of there, and you start reeling up. So always make sure to pop these off your fishing pole before you grab it off the jaw jacket. Same thing with your tip-ups. If you have these on your tip-ups, it goes off. Make sure it doesn't go flying off or going down the hole, because I've lost so many bells down the ice hole. But grabbing this, they rolls off or clips off or you go to try to clip it off and fumble it with your gloves. It's always a fun time. I 
that's how you set up the jaw jack. Then you go to I normally don't run this uh, fishing reel on here. This is just a really, really cheap uh, fishing reel. I don't even know what it is. Optimax. Uh, Optimax is like your. I mean, if you have a kid and you want to get them started. This is the type of reel I'd go with, but only go for like panfish, like sunfish and calicos. The trout will mess this up. I just have it on here just so I can have my fishing pole somewhat set up. If I was messing around with it, just wanted to get a little feel of the balance on it. See what type of reel I want to put on. Now I know I want to put a 500 on here, not a thousand. Um, but it's a decent reel for just picking up. I wouldn't go with trout, I wouldn't go with walleye with this because it's all plastic. This whole entire reel is plastic. Uh, definitely go with a better reel. Um, a Daiwa 500, Daiwa uh, Shimano 500, Daiwa 1000s. Uh, I really like the reel by Daiwa. Um, it's a shot, it's called Shock. By Daiwa, but it's a shock line. Uh, that's a really good reel. 500 series or even the 1000 series are fantastic. But I love this fishing rod. This is an ugly stick um, by Shakespeare. It is a GX2, which I believe is a medium action. Yeah, it's a medium action. Soft medium action. And you can see. It's got some nice dancing wave to it. I'm barely moving my wrists. As you can see in the video there. Nice action. I really like this rod. One of my favorite rods. Caught a lot of big fish off with this rod. But one of my other favorite rods, this one right here. And for my birthday, that's next month. Um, I actually was gifted a new rod that I'm actually able to open up on Christmas. And um, it's the same one, but it's all white. Um, actually, excuse me, the one I'm getting is a, a 13, 15, something like that. That's going to be all white. And that's a, a, a super ultra. So that's going to be really light. Um, this one right here is also a super light action with the other one being closer. So I'm, I can't wait for that to come. Um, but this one is by HT. HT also makes this Optimus reel right here. They're a really good company. Um, they make my ice shanty, but just this reel that they make is just no good. But with this rod right here, this thing, I love it. Absolutely love it. It's almost like a tickle stick. But it's like lighter than a tickle stick. Uh, I do have bands holding this one up because I only use this one for uh, panfish, um, calico, sunfish, small. Yellow perch, uh, even though the yellow perch get monsters. So normally I use this rod for trout and yellow perch and white perch, uh, walleye, um, and same with that other blue one. That one's mostly for the jaw jacker, though. I only really, really use that one for jaw jacker. Good setup for the jaw jacker. Um, I have caught trout off of this. The, I have it set up for trout. I have a trout lure on there right now. Um, and it's a lot of fun slamming trout with this. Um, I am running a 2-7 to 1 ratio um, with this reel. Honestly, it's an off-brand reel. Uh, I got it for a gift for Christmas. I actually wanted it. I saw it online. And um, 
The reviews were, were really good on it. Uh, it's made by Fiblink. Um, it's just a Chinese brand out of China, you know, a Chinese fishing company. And thought it looked cool. You know, it's got gold uh, in the black. Um, it's made out of plastic and metal. Um, metal's a thin aluminum, but it's it's metal. It's not, not gonna crack on me. Um, metal, heavy duty metal reel. Like this, this reel is, is heavy duty uh, metal right there. And then the core candles are actually uh, coated uh, in like this epoxy, which is really cool. It's nice in the hands. Um, yeah, you know, it's got a really nice ratio to it. Uh, it does uh, free drop. Has a whoop. See what happens. You push it too quick. It's uh, spring loaded almost, which is freaking awesome. But uh, I'm not paying attention, that's what happens. Open face. So, what happens is that will happen. And you gotta, that's all you gotta do. You just keep pulling, keep pulling until that knot is out. Because the knot will always straighten itself out. Quick, quick. Yep. Get stabbed with this treble hook here. There we go. There we go. with some of the lures. All right, so I've shown you the bells. How that light didn't work. But there's all these bells. Then you have these beauties right here. Five bucks a piece. They're for walleye fishing. Uh, trout will hit them. I don't have a lot of luck with trout um, with these lures. I always use different lures. But um, this one's a glow. This one is a standard chartreuse. But they are um, fish eyes. And what you do is you're going to put a, wall, um, a minnow head or a minnow tail on the back of this, and you're going to jig the bottom uh, and just keep bouncing off bottom. Um, they get fixated on, on the eyeball, so it just works. Uh, extra hooks. Got to have extra hooks, uh, extra barrel swivels, uh, non-clips, just the barrel swivels. Um, when it comes to hooks for the tip-ups, I always run um, size 8 octopus circle. Um, it just doesn't um, mess up the trout lips as much. It just has a really nice hook into the, into the side of the lip. The release of the hook is a lot easier um, and with the octopus circle it has a bigger belly on the bottom so when you put a live shiner on here you're going to put the live shiner onto the back of its dorsal fin and when it sits there it sits nicely on that wider gap um, and it can't pop off as much um, but when you're using octopus circle hooks any type of circle hooks, you have a greater chance of the fish coming off the hook. Um, so it's more of a nice little skill I play with myself there. Um, and then you have the uh, drop shot hook. 
Um, this is a size two. I like to use these also uh, when I'm bass fishing or ice fishing. They have a nice wide belly on them also. Uh, and they just stay with the shiner on there a lot better, especially if you're using larger shiners for bass fishing and pike fishing. That's a really good one. Uh, more swivels. The swivels are size 14s. The swivel, uh, this one's a size 8. Size 8 and a size um, 14 I use for calico, small pan fish, and trout and salmon. The size 12 is for bass and pike. Um, I also like to run uh, for calico and for trout sometimes. Um, I'll run a size 12. Eagle hook. Um, you can see how small those are. Oops. They're really tiny. Uh, I use those mainly for tying flies while fly fishing, but sometimes um, I'll throw one of these on there uh, with some mono and I'll just put a maggot on there and send it down to a small um, uh, buckshot. Um, also, you have single egg hook size 8 and octopus um, not circle just octopus hook size 8 but in red um, I will use those if I'm running shiners on a dead stick on a fishing pole I like using these um, the But these are also really good, again, size 8. And then you have a couple fun ones. Um, these are uh, tungsten style and lead style. They have wings on them. One has a flat bottom and it's rounded. The ones with the wings, when you drop it down, it's going to have a flutter action. And it's going to jet to the left and to the right every time you jig it. Uh, the one that has the rounded head uh, with the flat bottom is going to dart. It's going to go down and when you jerk it up it's going to come up towards you on sharp angles. Um, the ones that are flat like that and rounded uh, they will have a spoon like flutter to them as they're falling and once you are pulling them up they're going to be top heavy and kind of roll up with at each jig. Good for trout, uh, calico, small panfish, salmon. Uh, same with these little buggers here. They just look like um, little little grubs, little gnats that are starting to form in the ice. Um, larva trying to make its way up in the dirt. Same with these, these are all the same, just more like what I was just talking about with the flutters and the drops. And then this bad boy right here is for um, walleye. You can put a, a whole shiner on this one. Um, and then once you drop it down uh, and you dig it up, it's gonna have this nice action to it with the shiner sitting there trying to swim. And it's just gonna have some nice action. Thanks again for watching and always tight lines.